Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after the Ascension of our Lord, and uh, we're going to follow Divine Service 4 on page uh, 203 in your hymnal. Uh, communion will be done a little different this morning, uh, trying to social distance. Uh, the elements will be on those two stands there, uh, and so you can come forward one at a time and take communion. Uh, the wafer will be in a paper cup. So when you're done with the wafer, you can put the plastic cup inside that paper cup and put it in one of these baskets over there. The offering will be a self-offering there at the entrance door of the sanctuary, either before or following the service. Uh, looking at the governor's statements yesterday, it looks like we could get back to our 10 o'clock service uh, beginning next Sunday and going forward. So we'll have Bible study at 8.30 and 10 o'clock service. As you exit today, I guess it doesn't matter which exit you use because there's no one following you in. Um, but before we were using that door uh, for exit. May the Lord bless our worship and communion. We begin with the opening hymn, uh, hymn number 493. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty, Almighty God, have, have mercy upon us, forgive, forgive us, us our sins, sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His great mercy, has given His only begotten Son in order to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. And now we sing the hymn of praise. But send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated now for the readings. I am going to substitute the first reading uh, with Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Uh, that is uh, one of the readings for the celebration of Ascension, and so that will replace the reading that's printed in your bulletin. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up. After he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, to them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Thanks to be God. God. And now we respond alternately with Psalm 68. God shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. As smoke, As smoke is driven, driven away, away so, so shall he drive them, them away. away. As, As wax melts before fire, fire so, so the wicked shall perish before God. God. But the righteous shall be glad, they shall exalt before God, they shall be jubilant with joy. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides through the desert. His name is the Lord, exalt before him. Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God settles the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity but the rebellious dwell in a large land. O God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quake, the heaven poured down rain, before God, the one of the Sinai, before our God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O God, you shed abroad, you restored your inheritance as it languished. Your flock found not what in it. Your goodness, O oh God, you provide for the needy. The epistle for this Sunday is recorded in the fourth and fifth chapters of Peter's first epistle. He says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? 
Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And now we rise for the Alleluia and the Holy Gospel. of our faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the next hymn, 525.
We pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Amen. Grace and mercy and peace be unto all of you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the crucified, risen, and ascended one. Dear Redeemed, you know, I was driving over here today and I heard a song on the radio, an oldie from the Oak Ridge Boys, and it said, the closest thing to heaven is a little child. And then I thought about all the songs that mention the word heaven in them. Titles have the word heaven. If you look at country songs, you look at rock songs, not to mention the hymns in the church even, uh, you've got a number of hymns that have that, and I've got it on here. Knock, knocking on heaven's door. And Stairway to Heaven, that was a popular one when I was in high school. And Tears in Heaven. And Holes in the Floor of Heaven. And If Heaven Weren't So Far Away. And The Streets of Heaven. Well, you go Google that and you'll find tons more with the word heaven. And then we've got the readings for today. I chose the one from Acts chapter 1, and that's really the subject of our uh, talk today. And that was for the Ascension Day. But then John 17, Jesus' high priestly prayer, uh, that gives us a lot of insights into this as well. And then we confess in the creed, he ascended into heaven. So we do that every Sunday. We contemplate what that means and the phrase together with that, that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And so, you know, keeping our focus on heaven, that's key as we think about what it means that Jesus ascended. You know, he visibly physically went up and that goes contrary to the laws of physics you know that what goes up must come down but Jesus ascended and his disciples together with you and I on this day as we are reflecting on the that event uh, they are looking at Jesus and suddenly he disappears behind a cloud so that they can no longer see him and then Heavenly angels appear on the scene, just like they did at the birth of Jesus and at his resurrection, and they give a sermon. You've always got to have a sermon because, you know, that explains what's going on. And so in their sermon, the angels say to the disciples, why are you gazing into the heavens? This same Jesus whom you see go into heaven will again, in the same way, come back again. So, our focus is on heaven. That's what it's all about. And we are on a journey that leads to heaven. And our Savior Jesus Christ, who came down from heaven, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, and served his fellow humanity with wonderful acts of, of kindness and miracles of great power and went the way of the cross and gave himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world past present and future for yours and mine he did all of that and having accomplished all that the father had asked of him in order to bring about redemption now he returns to his heavenly home Think about what Jesus says in John 17. You heard it read a few moments ago. He said, Father, glorify me in your presence with the same glory uh, that I had before the world began. So Jesus is coming into heaven as the God-man, not just as the Son of God, not just as the Son of Man, but he is coming as the God-man. And what that means for us is that 
we are included in that glorious procession that leads to the heavenly throne. You know, in the Psalms, there are some coronation psalms that find their fulfillment in this event, that the king has been installed in heaven, that the throne of God is where he is now. Yes, and that is fulfilled in the ascending Lord Jesus Christ. Now, people think about heaven in many different ways. I mean, we look up into the sky and we see a, an eagle flying high up, right? Or we're flying in an airplane and we're 30,000 feet up and we can see the clouds below us. And that's, that's one aspect of heaven, right? The firmament. But then there's another level. If you go to uh, the planets and the galaxies and all of that that is far beyond our comprehension, we can't even begin to understand how vast and how big time that is. That's another level of heaven. But then go even more than that. Go to the third heaven. You know, it talks about Paul, the apostle, being taken up into the third heaven where he witnessed things that no one else has witnessed. He says, eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, nor conceived in the heart of man the wonderful things God is planning for his people. But think about that, that existence, where the Father relates to his creatures, the angels, and also the redeemed souls of believers, where he relates to them in a very direct way. And you look at Revelation 5, and that's the vision that was given to the evangelist John, where he could look into heaven and see the throne of God and give us a sermon as to what it's going to be like. And then Stephen, you remember the first martyr? Before he actually died, he looked into the heavens and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God. He got that final, he got that glimpse of heaven before he gave up his spirit. And so Jesus ascends into heaven. We're with the disciples, you know, as the disciples uh, view that unprecedented event and they are just staring up into the skies and the angels come and give them that sermon that he will come back again. You know, it's really a gravity-defying and um, gravity-defying and reason-defying event when you think about it. Because uh, we're used to, you know, gravity at work where things come down, right? But here Jesus is going against that uh, by going up into the heavens. We also uh, think about reason defined because the way we use our reason, we might, we might go like this. Well, you know, you could really make this world a better place, Jesus, if you would stay here with us, right? Especially with us who are work in progress, right? But he is ascending to his Father. That's what reason might argue, but faith will argue what Jesus had talked about, that if I go away, the Comforter will come to you. And yes, that's faith that's given by the Holy Spirit, that he calls and gathers and enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and that it is the special work of the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to not only convict with regard to sin, but also to comfort with regard to the forgiveness that God freely gives through his Son, Jesus Christ, having accomplished the work of salvation, having guaranteed the forgiveness of sins. Yes, we can with confidence believe and anticipate that we are involved in that glorious procession, that homecoming, that wonderful event of ascension. So no matter if we are living in pandemic times or 
If we are living in health and wealth and the pursuit of happiness, we never lose our focus on that heavenly reward, a reward that is by God's grace and totally a gift. You know, one of the things that uh, Jesus uh, does for us is that he intercedes and he is interceding for us at the throne of God. We see that in John 17 where he is praying for the disciples. He doesn't pray for the world, but he's praying for those whom the Father has given him. That means he's praying for us. And that should bring you comfort as well, that he is interceding before God the Father. He is there, and he has you in mind. You know, that's the thing about the God-man. He's not just God, but he's also man. And he understands what it's like for you and I to go through the fiery trials. He's been there. He's done it, right? He went through the agony of crucifixion and also through the agony of rejection and people making fun of him. He knows all of that. He can sympathize with us in our weakness. And that's who has the Father's ear, so to speak. And yes, he intercedes on our behalf. The story is told of a little girl who was talking with her daddy, and she was looking up at the beautiful summer sky, and she said to her dad, you know, if the heaven is so beautiful on the wrong side, how wonderful it will be on the right side. How even more glorious it will be. And so we can be mindful of that as we think about what it means to keep our focus on heaven. Never lose sight of that. And you know, you know, people might say, well, Jesus, why did you leave us so that we can't see you and we can't be with you like the apostles were? Well, think about what Peter says. Maybe suffer with Christ, and then you'll feel closer to him. I don't mean suffering for murder or something that's evil, but suffering for righteousness, for truth. Then you'll feel closer to Jesus. Jesus says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There you go. And so, with the Holy Spirit, which will be leashed out on Pentecost a week from today, 10 days from the Ascension, which is Thursday past. Remember that Ascension happened on the 40th day after the resurrection of Jesus. And then the Pentecost, the pouring out of the Spirit, happened 10 days after Ascension, 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord. And so, yes, God the Father has exalted his Son, the Son who is the God-man. And he says he is exalted so that people will give him praise and glory. Those in Every knee will bow, those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. Everyone will give him glory. And so we celebrate ascension and we get the sense that heaven is our home. That's the message that the angels are giving us, that God's word continues to give us. And when we think about Jesus' ascension, don't think that he is circumscribed or limited or confined to a certain place out in the universe, but rather know that he fills all things, and that he rules all things by his divine power and as the Son of Man, so that he can be with us in the sacrament today, that he can be with us as he promises, this is my body and this is my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Even though Jesus has left in the ascension, uh, he has not left us alone. 
He has not left us without the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and his word that abides forever. So may you be able to say with the hymnist, my walk is heavenward all the way, await my soul tomorrow, when thou shalt find release for a from all thy sin and sorrow. All worldly pomp be gone, to heaven I now press on, for all the world I will, would not stay. My walk is heavenward all the way. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Catechesis in worship, we look at the Creed, the third article, and so I'm going to say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I, I believe, believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, strength believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ my Lord, or come to him. him. But the, but Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit has called me by the gospel, gospel enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept, kept me in the true faith. In the same, same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. And now we rise for prayer. Guard your people, O Lord, and grant us unity of faith and singleness of heart as we come to you in prayer. O Lord, you have promised not to abandon your people, but to be with us always. Grant us grace to hear your word with faith and receive your holy sacrament with penitent, repentant hearts and to keep what we hear and receive upon our lips in holy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. O Lord, you have delivered the saints from fiery trial and raised up the martyr from the darkness of death to everlasting life. Give us courage that we may give bold witness to the truth in our own day and proclaim Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have pledged to us your spirit and promised to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come that we may never be without the aid of those to serve us in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have power over all things and appoint an order on earth for the protection of the weak, the punishment of evildoers, and the encouragement of virtue. Bless Donald, our president, Tim, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Give them wisdom for the challenges of our times and preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have compassion upon all who suffer. Give grace to the sick, to those with mental illness, to the dying in their last hours, and to those who grieve. Hear us especially for those among us, of Bruce, and Dolores, who celebrates her 98th birthday tomorrow, and also to Merle, and Bill Allman, and those we name in our hearts before you. Grant them patience in their afflictions, and deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O Lord, you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach, those who learn, and especially those who graduate this year. Be the hope of those whose plans have been disappointed and grant that all graduates would find meaningful employment. Guide them in the pursuit of your word and truth to live honorable lives in worthy vocations, that in all things you may be glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have given us your own Son as our Savior and Redeemer. He has set his table among us in the presence of our enemies, that we might be fed upon the body of Christ and drink his blood. Guard the unity of this table, that we would confess him with one voice and receive this blessed sacrament with one faith and hear our prayers for all for whom gathering has been difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith until we are with you in your presence forevermore. Guard us against the devil who prowls about like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he might devour. Grant us the power to resist him and trust in you without fear. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we continue with the service of communion on page 208. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them Amen. to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Samuel, adored, heaven and earth with Shout the glory of your name, sing Hosanna in the highest, sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given into death, and drinking his life's blood, poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. seated and at this time you can come one by one um, to the altar.
We now rise and join in singing the Nunc Dimittis on page 211. <coughs> salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. For the closing hymn, we'll sing one, three, and five. One, three, and five. <clears throat>